Make no mistake, the spiritual life is a battle. It isn't a battle fought with swords or metallic artillery, but an interior battle against our own wounded nature, the distractions of the world, and Satan. We fight it in our minds and hearts. The principal weapon in the battle of the spiritual life is prayer. That's right, to fight the hardest battle of all for the salvation of our own soul, we simply need to kneel and pray. We commit to a life of prayer. Let's talk about that. Just as we take care of our bodies, we need to also take care of our souls. We nourish our souls with prayer. If our souls are wounded, the cure begins with prayer. What is a soul? Our soul is our spiritual self. Souls can be hurt and damaged. And since we are all born in original sin, we all experience this internal pain. To restore what was lost in the fall, we must repair our relationship with the triune God, our creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Sin is painful. We all suffer. We suffer internally. We suffer in our relationships. The only way to heal relationships with friends and family is to heal your relationship first with Christ. We must fight to battle temptation and maintain a daily prayer life. Yes, fight. There are three key stages in the spiritual life. During the purgative stage, we turn away from mortal sin and towards God. We do penance to regain control of our desires. In the illuminative stage, we focus on avoiding venial sin. In the unitive stage, we enter deeper communion with God. It's a growth. We pray the memorized prayers, then we internalize them, then we actually gain something called spiritual refreshment. So when you memorize a prayer, it's like having a new app on your phone. Wherever you are, if you're not sure what to do and need a quick fix of grace, pray in our Father or a glory be right there in your head. Pray for guidance and you will receive answers. You will grow confident that you can do the right thing. And if you err or mess up, which we all do, you can trust yourself to pray and make a correction. Memorize the rosary, the whole thing, and you will never be alone again. You can address Mary in a most pleasing and intimate manner, and she will take you to her son. The more you meditate on the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of Christ, the more your own life will start to make sense. What do we have to battle when it comes to prayer, though? Well, mostly dedication. We can easily become distracted or lazy. Our minds wander. Like any relationship, because prayer is a communication with God, it's easy to grow too comfortable with prayer. Prayer can even seem like a burden at times. We start thinking about other stuff. Should I cook dinner tonight or plead exhaustion as I heave a frozen pizza into the oven? Can I devise some brilliant system to organize laundry so I don't even have to fold it? St. Thomas Aquinas addresses wandering minds in the Summa Theologiae. In the second part of the second part, question 83, article 13, he asks, is attention a necessary condition of prayer? His answer is yes and no. Yes, of course. Attention is necessary. We must intend to pray. When we articulate a daily plan for prayer and desire to pray, we intend to fix our minds on God, and we are paying attention in that original sense. That counts for something. St. Thomas Aquinas says, Even holy men sometimes suffer from a wandering of the mind when they pray. He cites Psalm 39, 13, where the author laments, My heart hath forsaken me, and reassures us that, to an extent, an inattentive mind is natural. St. Thomas puts it like this, the human mind is unable to remain aloft for long on account of the weakness of nature because human weakness weighs down the soul to the level of inferior things. And hence it is that when, while praying, the mind ascends to God by contemplation, of a sudden it wanders off through weakness. So no, in another sense, complete attention the whole time is not necessary for prayer. 
If your mind wanders, it's okay. Your prayer still counts. But attention is a goal. Laziness is no excuse. Think about it. If we intend to pray and intend to let our minds wander, then we don't really intend to pray at all. The reward for praying attentively, for granting assent of our minds to God so thoroughly that we forget everything else, is that we attain that spiritual refreshment of the mind. St. Aquinas gives us three points for learning to pray better. Simply, say the words correctly, attend to the meaning of the words, think about what they mean, and make sure that we're focusing on God. But let's face it, there are times when we truly struggle to pray because of illness, loss, isolation, depression, or frustration. There are periods in life when it seems our prayers are not heard. Here, I think, is where intent counts the most. If we cannot pray attentively because we are hurting, healing, or suffering, the merit is in our trying. St. Aquinas reminds us of our humanity again with a quote. If you are so truly weakened by sin that you are unable to pray attentively, strive as much as you can to curb yourself and God will pardon you, seeing that you are unable to stand in his presence in a becoming manner, not through negligence, but through frailty. Remember the end of the Hail Mary prayer, the part that says, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Perhaps at the end of our lives, the times when we failed to pray attentively will not count so much, such as all the nights we drifted off to sleep in the middle of a prayer with Christ's name on our lips, or the days we rattled off the rosary in six minutes because the chores of daily life competed with our sanity, or when we sat weeping in despair, barely able to say anything. Perhaps what will count at the hour of death is the journey the way our whole life became our unceasing prayer. Because through it all, year after year, day after day, we never gave up and never stopped fighting the battle of the spiritual life. I'm Bishop Joseph Strickland. Thank you so much for viewing this episode of The Way of Christ. It is an excellent resource for growing in your Catholic faith for deepening your life in Jesus Christ. You can purchase your own copy of The Way of Christ at stphilipinstitute.org slash store. God bless you, and let us continue to grow in his light.